Okay, first thing we want to do is do our ladder diagram up here for our standard wiring for a forward reverse. So here is our normally closed stop push button. Then we normally have a normally open forward push button. In parallel with that guy, we've got a holding contact for the forward coil. And then before we get to the forward contactor, we're going to have the reverse normally closed. That'll be our electrical interlock. Then we've got our forward coil. And then somewhere in series with the coil there, we've got our normally closed overload contact. Coming off of this point right here, we also have the reverse normally open. Beauty. In parallel with that, we have our reverse holding contact. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room there. Nice. And then in series with that, we're going to have the opposing normally closed contact in series with our coil. And these guys are both controlling the same motor. So we only need to have one overload contact in series with both of them. Beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly and methodically pull out all of our inputs. And again, this is going to be the open loop so far. So let's start off with the, the stop push button first. Actually, I'll keep with the, the black and I'll just draw in my, my stop push button right here. I know that my stop is wired into my input zero here. Uh, my start is connected into input number one. Not my start, but my forward push button. Okay, then my reverse push button is connected into input number two. So we've got our stop here. Get that above so I can do the address to the side there. So we've got stop, forward, and reverse push buttons. And for each of these guys, we've been wiring them as sourcing inputs. So the positive goes out in the field. That powers up each of those guys. So it powers up our stop, our forward. Oh, what's going on there, Pete? Our forward here. and our reverse contact. Nice. And then each of them are ripped out of the circuit and they go to individual input terminals on the PLC. So it's no longer again the path of current flow, it's the path of logic that happens within our PLC diagram that we're going to put right here. Okay. In order to finish that circuit off, we got to do a common to the zero and that will complete that circuit all the way back to the source. Very nice. So that takes care of this guy and this guy and this guy. These two, remember for the open loop, are just gonna look at the address for the output for the forward or reverse contactor. So we'll leave those guys. We won't have those inputs yet. All right, so on our output side here, we're gonna to need to have that fuse. So we've got that little control fuse in our X1. So we got a little one amp fuse there. And then I'm going to go from my X1. You'll notice that I changed my uh, color here. Uh, I was on cruise control here. My DC, my input is DC voltage, so I've made this into a blue conductor. And then my output conductors are an AC, 24 volts AC. So it's going to be red. So I got X1 going through the fuse, then going to the common. And think of the common as like feeding like a bus. And that bus allows that voltage to then go in out to each of the outputs whenever the PLC decides, right? So you're feeding the, the common bus there. And then when your output goes from a zero to a one, it will transfer that, in this case, 24 volts AC to this output terminal. Okay, the other outputs that we have there are the forward and the reverse contactor. So we've got our forward contactor here. 
And what I've got is in line with the, the forward contactor. I've already got my normally closed contact in series with it. So again, our electrical interlock of having the opposing normally closed contact in series with the coil is already there. And let's see, I've got my other output over here and I'll put my forward normally closed interlock contact. And then I've got my reverse, beautiful. And then going back to uh, X2, those guys are both gonna share the normally closed overload contact. Nice, okay, let's just draw in our conductors there. So we fed the common, then this output terminal will feed through this normally closed contact to this coil, from that coil through the overload contact and back to X2 to complete the circuit. And over here we have this output going through the opposing normally closed contact, then to the reverse. And again, that reverse is going to uh, go through the overload contact there. So if the overload opens, it's going to stop either the forward or the reverse. Beautiful. So I've made a list of myself of all my inputs and my outputs. My outputs for these guys are output number two. And the one that I have hooked up to the reverse contactor is output number three. Excellent. Okay, over here we had input zero, input number one, and input number two. Okay, so obviously I've got uh, output zero and one prior to this. I just haven't drawn them in. Then I've got output two and three, and those are the ones that I'm gonna make use of here for this program. Okay, that takes care of everything. Um, it takes care of this guy right here, and this guy right here for my outputs. Uh, this is the open loop again, so I'm not gonna have a contact from the contactor going back as an input yet. And I'm not making use of the overload as an input either. All right, guys, so let's start uh, addressing everything up. All right, so let's start with our stop here. So this guy I'm going to address as percent input 0, 0.0. Again, I'm doing everything for Tweedo Suite, but for Allen Bradley or for Siemens, you would just change this address to match with your processor. So we've got this guy as percent input 0, 0. Okay, the forward, I'm going to use my uh, my start start push button for my previous videos. So that guy I have wired into input number one. Okay, let's see if we can throw that. I don't know if there's enough room in here. I'll just see if I can try. No. What about here? Percent input 0 0.1. Beautiful. Okay. Then for my reverse, I'm going to use my jog push button for my reverse. And that guy is wired up to input number two. Okay, so my reverse push button right here is going to be, uh, well, didn't leave myself much room here. Let me get rid of this guy. Okay, okay let's do our output addressing now. So for me, for my Tweedo Suite, my output address here is going to be percent Q zero, and I'm physically wired to output number two, so I'm going to address it the same. And my reverse contactor is going to be percent Q zero dot three, the three corresponding to the output terminal that I've actually wired up. Okay, we can add that to this diagram above here. So this guy is percent Q zero dot two. And here we got percent Q zero dot three. Beautiful. Okay, and that's everything we need so far because we've got our open loop. All right, guys, now we can get into our PLC programming. So we'll start off with our first push button here, the stop. And again, we're looking what, to see whether there is voltage or no voltage at the terminals. So in order for this forward contactor to turn on, I don't want anybody to press that stop push button. So I have wired this up as a normally closed. I could have used a normally open, just use the opposite instruction. But in this case, I've used a normally closed. And we're looking to see whether there is voltage in that case impressed across this input zero. So the positive 24 volts comes over, comes to this normally closed contact. 
And then that voltage, if this push button has not been pressed, will go across and will in fact be impressed across input zero. So out of these two instructions, because these are the two that we're going to use, we're either using an XIC or we're using an XIO. In this case, there is voltage present at that terminal. And the instruction that looks for voltage at that terminal is an XIC. So I'm going to start off with that guy. For my stop push button. Beautiful. Okay, next one is my forward push button. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We have physically ripped each of these guys out of the circuit, and it's no longer the path of current that decides whether the contactor turns on, it's just the path of logic. So we need somebody to actually press this push button in order for this contactor to turn on, right? This needs to be pressed in order for this guy to turn on. So when this is pressed, again, this will be a closed contact. And that 24 volts will be able to go right to that input number one. So I'm looking for when this input number one has voltage. When it has voltage inside the PLC, the number in the data table will go from a zero to a one. So again, the instruction that I'm going to use is an XIC. I'm looking for the presence of voltage at that terminal there. I'm looking for whether the, the input for that forward push button has gone from a zero to a one. So again, this guy is going to be my forward push button. Again, there is no hard and fast rule. This one was a normally closed, this guy was a normally open, and we use the exact same instruction for either of them. Okay, next thing we need to do is put in our, uh, our reverse, and that one we're gonna use the actual output of the of this Q0.3. So we're just going to look inside the PLC and say, all right, is the reverse on or is the reverse off? In this case, we need the reverse to be off. We can't have both of these contactors turning on at the same time. So the instruction that looks to see if something is off is this guy right here, the XIO. So the next thing for this guy right here is going to be an XIO. So for here, this is going to be my reverse coil. And I'm going to make use of an XIO instruction. Okay, again, I'm looking to see that this is off. The instruction that looks to see that that bit of information is off or is zero is this one, the XIO. Okay, next thing we need is the uh, the output for the forward coil. I'm not making use of the overload yet in my PLC program, but right here we've got our forward coil. And that takes care of everything aside from this holding contact right there. So I'm going to parallel in my holding contact. And let's see, I'm looking to see whether um, the forward coil is on or whether it is off. So in order for this forward holding contact to close, this forward coil must have turned on. The instruction that looks for something, if it's on, is this one right here, an XIC. So we're going to use an XIC in there. And again, for the open loop, all we're going to do is we're just going to see that the forward coil has actually turned on. We don't have an input here from that holding contact to tell us that it has actually turned on. Excellent. Okay, we can throw in all of our addressing there. So for the, uh, the stop push button, that was percent input 0, 0.0. For the forward push button, that was percent input 0 0.1 for the reverse coil that was this guy right here percent q 0 0.3 i'm just physically looking inside the plc and seeing whether that coil is off and then the output for my forward coil is address percent q 0 0.2 when this guy turns on i want to provide another path of logic for that 
coil to remain on. So the address for this guy right here is percent %Q0.2. Address the same as that forward coil. Beautiful. Okay, so now what we need to do is really just do copy and paste because this portion of the circuit right here is the exact same addressing, or sorry, not the same addressing, but the exact same instructions as the forward coil. So let's rock through that. My stop push button, I can make use of that contact as many times as I want because it's been ripped out of the, the circuit there. And it just goes into the PLC as an input. And I'm just looking to see whether that's a zero or a one. In this case, I'm looking to see that it's a one. Nobody's pressed the stop push button. So in fact, there is voltage going to that input terminal. The next one that I need is my reverse push button. And again, I'm looking to see that someone has actually pressed this reverse push button. When they press that reverse push button, then this guy is supposed to turn on. And when they press this button, that 24 volts will be impressed to input number two. So there will be voltage there and the IO table will go from a zero to a one. So I'm again using an XIC for that instruction. Okay, I'm then looking at my forward coil and I'm going to make sure that my forward coil is off. The instruction that looks for something is off is an XIO and then that's going to go straight to my last output here with my reverse coil. Again, I have not made use of the overload aside from the fact that I have the overload in series with my loads here. So if I do have an overload condition, then this and this will be stopped on their current flow. I just don't have a closed loop having that overload normally open contact sending a signal in to tell me that I'm in an overload condition. Okay, we said we could just copy and paste, so then we'd also have a parallel connection here. And again, we'd be making use of the XIC instruction in that we're looking to see that the reverse coil is on. When the reverse coil is on, it will have a one and there'll be voltage going out to the field. So I'm gonna use an XIC instruction to look at that. Okay, and then finally, we'll just throw in our uh, addressing here. So for my Tweedo suite, again, this guy here is percent input. 0.0. .0. We can use that input as many times as we, as we want. The reverse push button was going to input number two. Okay, the forward coil, I'm just looking at this data table and seeing that it is a zero. So that guy is percent Q 0 0.2. My output for my reverse coil is off of terminal number three, so I have percent Q 0 0.3. And when this goes from a zero to a one, then I'm gonna monitor that. And so this guy is gonna be percent Q 0 0.3. And that's it, guys. All right, guys, so that'll be it. We'll stop the video there. The next video in the playlist will have me dropping this into the processor, and then we'll see it working. This will be like the intro to regardless of which processor you're using, whether you're using a Tweedo Suite, an Allen Bradley, or a Siemens. There may be minor variations in the way that they um, call each of these guys, whether it's an XIC or XIO, and the way that they put in their inputs and outputs. But essentially, the program will be exactly the same. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next uh, video.